by the light from the lamps in our living room Polly Sheaf brings to you to drink at work. It wasn't like a thing I did or that anyone did ever, but there had been a lunch with the accounts payable department that stretched into early dinner and Don was seated beside me. Don with the hair. That Don. He sits on the other side of the partition from me who never seems too hot or too cold even though the temperature in the office is always set to chill or melt and his lips looked like he just applied a fresh layer of cherry chapstick. Though Don was so not the type to wear cherry chapstick, and I just thought, Jesus, if I don't have a drink, I'm gonna... Because drinks always make me more reserved, not less, like most of my colleagues, friends, and mother. And so I downed a Long Island Lace Tea as quickly as possible to keep from reaching out and swiping my pinky finger along Don's glossy, luscious bottom lip. By the time appetizers were finished, uh, Don and I had exchanged no less than two anecdotes about the bubbly copier rep we secretly loathed. And in that time, I was closer to plaster than sober, and all my stories came out sounding like the beginning of a eulogy. But if Don noticed that I was, like, strangely pensive and glum, he didn't say anything. He was too manly for that. And I was just glad that I hadn't pounced on him like a beagle puppy on a hot dog nut. <gasps> Thankfully, my cubicle mate, Sonia, dropped me home, propped me up against the mailbox, and made sure I could successfully wave goodbye before she zoomed off to job number two as a yoga Pilates something instructor. I, I couldn't remember what sort of bendy exercise it was anymore, and I also couldn't remember her last name, <laughs> which was troubling. The world, the world tilted slightly. That I remember that distinctly, and I bent my head down as my mother had always taught me many moons ago, and breathe deeply. Knee gaze and suck in, Sheila, she always said. And, and that, until the world is right. Such a sage, I had always thought. But there was practicality in her wisdom that I was grateful for now. As I bent over, I noticed that my mailbox, tucked under my arm, or, or rather supporting most of the body attached to my arm, was slightly ajar. And I straightened a little, enough to nudge it open with more with the tip of my nose, and then I noticed something. This was not my mailbox. <laughs> shit. I thought, shit, Sheila, shit. Is this even your house? I turned around a move that made me want to hurl, and saw that, yes, I was standing in front of my house, sort of. I, I was in front of my neighbor's house, uh, leaning on my neighbor's mailbox, and the mailbox door that I had just nudged open with my nose was not my own. I was about to nudge it closed with my nose when the rest of me became as nosy as my nose. <laughs> and peeked inside. My eyes widened, and my breath caught. The mailbox held no mail. The mailbox held a Don. A tiny, dewy-lipped Don in H.O. scale. He was tiny enough to drive the train that circled my Christmas tree each December. I didn't know what to do next. I mean, I didn't want to say anything inappropriate in my inebriated state, especially because my words would be so big. 
compared to this teeny tininess that I wouldn't want my exuberance to knock him over or, or wound him in some way. And as I was worrying about what to say and how to say it, I suddenly thought, whoa, somebody shrunk Don and then left him here for me. Or for my neighbor, maybe, but, but no, probably me. And they just got the address wrong. And I just thought, well, that is just the nicest nicest thing anyone has ever done for me. But then I thought, wait, that might be the only nice thing anyone's ever done for me. And that made me feel terrible because why don't people do nice things for me? I mean, I'm nice. I'm nice enough not to scoop the teeny tiny sexy coworker out of my neighbor's mailbox because you're not supposed to tamper with the mail. And also, I don't think you're supposed to carry people around in your palm like an insect. And also, it freaked me out that he was so tiny. And also, I thought I might be very, very drunk. You know, I tried to remember what they did in that movie with Rick Moranis that wasn't Ghostbusters because I thought it might be relevant to the situation. You know the one, the one where his kids are swimming in his cereal and he almost eats them and they get there because of a machine and his wife is mad and yet somehow I don't think any of it had to do with Long Island Lice Tea. Long Island Lice... <laughs> Long Island Lice... 